all my life, I felt there was someone inside of me. It's now to be him. <laughs> you fighting again? They call me back! I didn't do anything! It wasn't me! It was Lucy. The fifth personality again. Such a nasty attitude. See, this gets complicated. See, Lucy is in his head, because Rudy has what's called multiple personalities. In his head? No, 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 She's, she's, uh, she's a ghost. What the? Yes. And she makes Rudy say things that he doesn't want to say. Lucy, you've got some nerve making old Rudy say things like that. You know that Helsinger is not fat. In fact, you said that Helsinger was handsome. Oh, you shove me. Oh, she slapped me. Now I'll tell you something, Lucy. You will leave Rudy alone, and if you come back here again, you'll have to deal with me. Thank you, Lucy. She really made you say all that? Yeah, was it me? Sorry. Hey. Lucy thinks I'm handsome. Mm-hmm. Isn't that right? What is he doing here? Hello, Jimmy. Go to hell, Ed. Oh, you've already put me there. Here. <laughs> but not for long, my friend. I'll find my way out. Because this place is just one big puzzle, and puzzles are my forte. Nobody beats me. I did. See you never, Ed. That's what you think. I have the feeling he's going to be more than a simple nuisance. Not the type to be bribed, nor distracted easily. Indeed. Very interesting. What has no hands but might knock on your door? And you better open up if it does. Mr. Gordon's continued interference threatens to slow us down. But we're about to reach our finest moment. He'll do more than that. Mr. Nigma. Eavesdropping is rude and unwise. Eavesdropping implies intent, and I mostly accidentally overheard. Overheard what? Jim Gordon. The word nuisance sounds familiar. Probably has something to do with your releasing Penguin and Gordon's ex fiance Probably. I can help you. Take him down. I know everything about Jim Gordon. If you let me out of here, we could probably just sit down in your office. Mr. Nigma, you can't help me. I'm here to help you. Those are the roles that were defined for the two of us. Now, there's another pressing matter. No, listen, I, I... I can manipulate people. I did it to Gordon once and I can do it again. It's people's brains are just a mystery. And once you figure it out... Look, Helsinger. Can't stand criticism because of an overbearing mother. Wants love and approval. Gets mad when he doesn't get it. So I give it. Oh, thank you. Sharon. Kleptomaniacal, due to obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> Just give her something to concentrate on. <sighs> and Norton, serious boundary issues. Prone to torture, violence, and cannibalism. Unless he thinks he's your friend. For me? Mm -hmm. oh. My point is, everyone has a story, and they just want to be listened to. My God, I should be the shrink. What did you say? I'm sorry, was that too far? Everybody has a story. That's it. Mr. Nigma, you've actually been very helpful. Mr. Nigma, you have been, you've actually been helpful. Mr. Nigma, you have actually been helpful. This missile, the complete arrogance. Mr. Nigma, Mr. Nigma, actually been helpful. Inmate Helsinger. Come with me. Yes, ma'am. Why 
do they keep disappearing down that hallway? Strange is hiding something. Where are you taking me? Where are we going? Where are we going? I need you to go back to the kitchen and get the bug zapper. What are you going to do with all this stuff anyway? I think Professor Strange is hiding something. And I think that something is a secret way out of this dump. So I'm going to use this stuff to find it. I want to go. We're just going to see. yourself. Big mistake. Sorry. My bad. Just got lost. Escort me back, would you? Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Girl? You framed Gordon. And you tried to get a reward by turning him in. Mm, yeah. What the hell are you doing here? What the hell are you doing here? I gotta get out of here. This place is crazy. They're probably looking for me. Which way is out of here? I'll help you if you help me. 
We're estranged right now. Okay. Look, I barely know you, but that is the last person that you want to be looking Why for. Why is that? The basement here? It's horrible. Just trust me, stay away. He's a very dangerous man. Basement. Alive people, dead people, dead alive people, it's horrible. Okay, how do I get there? Oh, it's like I'm saying things and you're just not hearing them. He has a friend of mine and I'm here to get her out. Now, how do I get there? You'll tell me the way out? Yes. Okay. <laughs> There's an elevator. I'll tell you where it is, but can you pick a lock? two are getting along. I should warn you, Mr. Nigma, Mr. Sturk has been known to eat people. But he's promised to stop that, haven't you, Mr. Sturk? You have to get me out of here! Are you asking for a favor? You should have considered that before you decided to escape. How are you going to stop Jim Gordon? What? Jim Gordon and the GCPD have been here twice in the last week. It's obvious that they know. Obvious they know what? Do I really have to say it? Oh, you're making monsters in the basement! I'm hungry! Quiet, stir. Monsters in the basement. <laughs> you are insane, Mr. Nigma. Obviously. Jim Gordon is coming, and you're going to need all the help that you can get. So why don't you go tell Strange that if he wants to stop Gordon and the GCPD, then he's going to need my help. Now! <laughs> Lucius. Bruce, are you okay? I'm fine. Where's Gordon? I haven't seen him. I'm sorry I got you into this, Lucius. It seems likely we're all going to die in here. Don't say that. I don't mind dying. I mind that I got you and Jim Gordon and Selena Kyle involved. Bruce, you are a remarkable young man, but you didn't force any of us to do anything. We chose. Hugo Strange said that all this time I've been searching for the man who killed my parents. And really, it was my own father. That he knew what he was doing. That I and my father's son. Bruce, your father had the courage to fight for what he believed in. And as long as there's life, there's hope. Touching sentiment. Who are you? Where's Jim Gordon? I would urge you to worry about yourselves right now. Jim Gordon has his own problems. <laughs> so here's the situation. Professor Strange has tasked me with finding out how much you two know about what he's been up to. And more importantly, who you told. Show us Jim Gordon and Selena Kyle. I think you're not quite grasping the power dynamic here, turtleneck. As I was saying, we need to know what you know, and you're gonna tell me. Or poison gas will spew from the nozzles above your head and you will both die very, very painfully. I know this voice. He worked for the GCPD, he had a funny kind of name. There's nothing funny about my name. He was the one that framed Jim Gordon. You always were a smart cookie, Foxy. 
You know why Strange gave me this job? It's because he knows that I would kill you both and not bat an eye. So, keeping that in mind, five minutes on the clock. Starting now. <laughs> Fun. Okay, quiz kids. Who's ready to play? Life or death? Sir, Mr. Nigma, you are Nigma, aren't you? This is absurd. The police know we're here. You can't kill us. Are you ready to play? Yes. Good. You have one guess. Five minutes to talk it over. Who runs Indian Hill? Who runs Indian Hill? You have one guess. Think carefully, fellas. Answer correctly. Or die. You have 60 seconds left. Who runs Indian Hill? I say Hugo Strange. Wayne Enterprises. Wayne Enterprises runs Indian Hill. That's surmise. Why would he ask that question if the answer is obvious? He wants to know what we know what we think we know. Which is Wayne Enterprises. Is that your answer? Running out of time here. Yes. Correct! Wayne Enterprises runs Indian Hill. Bravo, Brucey. You're almost safe. Just one more question. You ready? Yes. You have five minutes, quiz kids. Answer correctly or die. Wayne Enterprises runs Indian Hill, but who runs... Wayne Enterprises. You have 30 seconds left. Who runs Wayne Enterprises? Oh, uh, the, the devil, maybe. Is that the deal? Communist witches? No, there's some truth behind this question. Some big secret. I've worked for Wayne Enterprises for 10 years. There is no big secret. The board of directors runs Wayne Enterprises. 15 seconds. That can't be the answer, Lucius. Ten seconds. Give us more time. Five seconds. The board of directors. <sighs> Incorrect. Oh, what a shame. The correct answer is... <sighs> Sorry, fellas. You lose. And what happens to losers? Yelza! I'm impressed. You are a shaman of sorts, a witch doctor. So just between us, who does run Wayne Enterprises? I could tell you, but then I would have to lobotomize you. <laughs> gotcha. So moving forward, sir, I would be more than happy to help you with any of your other cases. You would be a wonderful addition to my staff, Ed. A wonderful addition if you were only sane. No, seriously. Yes, seriously, you have been very useful, and we arrogant physicians have much to learn from a madman like you. But not that much. No, 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 you will not treat me like a crazy person! No! Yes, of course I know how, but what is with all the hoop hop? What is the rush here? Just do it. What do I get if I do it? You get to live. Fair enough. What's going on? Hello? 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 Guys! What's going on? 
one. It's a puzzle. The trick is opening it. The man at the store said it's one of the most difficult ever made. People pass it down unsolved for generations. A mathematician once went mad trying. Oh. Yes. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> it was a lovely thought. And did you get the biscuits? And the sweater, I, I know how drafty these rooms are. Mr. Penguin. Oswald. When I think of how I treated you. Stop. Why are you being so kind? Talking to you these past months, I don't know how I would have gotten by otherwise. Fish out there planning who knows what. Me being surrounded by morons and lunatics. I know the feeling. Why didn't she kill me when she had the chance? I was powerless. She must have a larger goal. I, I need to know what she is doing. Do you? When Alexander encountered the Gordian Knot, a knot so complex no one had ever been able to untangle it, He just removed his sword and cut it in two. Details can be distracting. Sometimes a simple solution is best. So no matter what she is planning, just remember. Penguins eat fish. I'm sane. Absolutely. 100%. I examined you myself. And the murder of Miss Kringle. Committed while you were insane. Officer Doherty. Insane. Officer Pinkney. Insane. And now I'm sane. And not responsible for any of the acts perpetrated during your sickness. You're a free man, Edward. <sighs> not to look a gift horse in the mouth, but how did you... Hello, old friend. It's election day in Gotham with former Mayor Aubrey James and former criminal kingpin Oswald Cobblepot mm -hmm. running to the should take care of it. Appreciate it. Thank you. I must say you are looking quite the dapper fellow. Hold on. <laughs> I had to guess on the jacket size. I hope it fits. Perfectly. I cannot thank you enough. It's just a suit. No. No, if it weren't for you, I would still be falling asleep to the screams of the insane. It becomes almost a white noise after a while, doesn't it? It does. I do believe, Oswald. Arkham has made us both stronger. I couldn't agree more. Which is why I had our release certificates framed. A reminder of past struggles and new beginnings. If I didn't know better, I'd accuse you of being a sentimentalist. Guilty. <laughs> you all set, boss? Busy day today. Who are those people you were speaking with? Don't worry about it. Come now, Butch, play nice. We're all on the same team here, right? My team. <laughs> yeah, sure. Whatever you say. You keep your nose out of my business. Yeah, sure. Whatever you say. My beloved mother always believed in me. 
Even when I doubted myself, she held firm. Seeing all of your bright faces reminds me that there is nothing you cannot do if you put your mind to it. And when I am mayor, I believe, no, I know that together we will make Gotham safe again. <laughs> Excuse me, are you on the election board? Yeah. I work for Mr. Cobblepot. He just wanted me to confirm what Butch gave you. May I? Thank you. It's all there. Thank you. Follow him for the rest of the day. Don't let him leave your sight. I assume you know Butch is paying campaign officials by the election. You don't approve? <laughs> My dear Ed, this is Gotham. This is how things are done. And in theory, I support that. But Oswald, do you see how these people are cheering for you? Yes, they do seem very excited. You can win this on your own. Why risk it? There is no upside. I want this, Ed. I want this like I've never wanted anything. I know which is why you need to call off Butch. Mr. Penguin? Hello there. I wanted to thank you for getting rid of all the monsters. Do you see? People look at me differently now. For the first time in my life, I feel wanted. Nice doing business with you. And how do you feel now? I feel like I've misjudged someone who's supposed to be my friend. I am your friend. I can't be bought, but I can be stolen with a glance. I'm worthless to one, but priceless to two. What am I? I don't care. I do not need a stupid riddle right now. I know what I want. I want to be mayor. Stay out of it, Ed. From morning you. The night that all of Gotham has been waiting for. The final resumption should be coming in. This is it. The moment I've been waiting for. Indeed. You! You! You ruined everything! What? Release him this instant! What is going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. He just cost you the election. He went to every district official and took the money back. Said you wanted to run a clean election. Tell me this is not true. I'm afraid Butch is right. For once. Uh, why? After everything I've done for you, everything we could have done together, you betrayed me. Butch! Give me one reason why I shouldn't let Butch kill you where you stand. Well, there are about 30 witnesses. I don't care! And there's that. In what can only be viewed as a seismic shift, even by Gotham standards, former underworld kingpin Oswald Cobblepot has won the mayor's office by a landslide. Mr. Cobblepot's momentum based largely on his outspoken criticism of how city officials and the GCPD mishandled the Indian. Do you really want me as mayor? Yes. As nothing more than possible. I can't be bought. But I can be stolen with one glance. I'm worthless to one, but priceless to two. Love. They love me. If you would have bought the election, you would have never known. And now you do. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? How did you know I would win? I believe in you, Oswald. Even when you don't believe in yourself. You. You never believed I could win this election on my own. I think maybe you're not cut out for this after all. What? You gotta be kidding me. This don't guy worry, I still need someone to crack skulls. <laughs> Come, Ed. We have plans to make. <laughs> <laughs> it is with a humble heart 
that I accept the trust placed in me by this great city to become your mayor. The people have spoken, and I have heard their call. And as my first act as mayor, I would like to introduce you to my chief of staff, Mr. Edward Nigma. <laughs> something I've been wanting to ask you. Am I a good boy? Have I made you proud? I hope I'm not interrupting. Ed, you never met my mother. Wasn't she beautiful? A fine figure of a woman. She was my whole world. The only one that was always there for me. Well, I believe the answer is yes. She would be proud. Do you really think so? Oswald, look at everything you've achieved. The people love you. Gangs fear you. And tomorrow night, the creme of Gotham will be gathering to celebrate you. What more could someone ask for? Someone to share it with. My mother was the daughter of immigrants, a humble cook. We did not have much, but when she was by my side, I felt loved, protected. As promised, I have rid Gotham of its villainous monsters. With my mother as my witness, I vow to you from this day forward, every man, woman, and child in our great city will be safe. No one is safe, not from us. Drop it. Put it down. Don't go losing your head. Have a nice day! We're shitting in the arrows. We got forensics going over it and teams doing a 10 block sweep. We already found this. The Red Hood Gang. I thought those idiots were dead. My guess is they're copying the look. The original Red Hood Gang were bank robbers. Whoever they are, they got a beef with Penguin. Expand the search to 15 blocks. Everything goes through you. You mean through me? Good to be back. I have missed all of you. <laughs> Harvey, still a stranger to a haircut and a shave, I see. What are you doing here, Nigma? As Mayor Cobblepot's chief of staff, I'm going to be your liaison on the Red Hood investigation. I want to see all reports, and I'm going to need access to your forensic lab. You think I'm going to just let you waltz into my precinct? 
You're a cop killer who should be in the loony bin. I'll be damned. You'll be fired. The mayor can't fire me. No, but he can appoint a police commissioner who will. So, you will carry out the mayor's orders without question. Well, the GCPD has a new captain. How does that sound? Every dog has a stay, Enigma. Enjoy yours. And where is our Lord Mayor? Hiding under his desk? He's meeting with constituents. <laughs> Mr. Fox, just the man I've been wanting to see. Oh, joy. Mr. Nigma, I heard you were stopping by. I have questions. Hopefully you have answers. Or what? You'll poison me with gas? <laughs> that gas was a sleeping agent. And to be fair, I was not in the best place in my life. To be fair, if you ever threaten my life or the life of Bruce Wayne again, I will find a way to end you. Mr. Fox, we both know you're not a man of violence. No, I am not. If I was, I would have laced some piece of lab equipment, one which you were sure to touch, with a toxin. Ricin, maybe? I'd use saxitoxin, harder to trace. But I like your style. You are insane. Was insane. I have a certificate. So, the Red Hoods? See for yourself. The gang's getaway vehicle was abandoned in the Narrows. As you'll notice, its carpet fibers has elements of dirt, oil, and oddly potassium chloride. A halide salt. Fascinating. Dr. Tompkins. I had heard that you were back. I'm so glad to. That's for Kristen. You shouldn't have done that. Or what? I'm supposed to be scared of you because you work for Penguin? My fiance's father is Carmine Falcone. I so much as whisper to him, and you disappear. Tell the mayor, whatever I can do is at me, I'm happy to help. Someone is testing me, Ed. They're thinking, oh, he's mayor now. He has to play by different rules. No, they'll see when I'm roasting their entrails over a fire. Perhaps I'm thinking about this all wrong. Perhaps this is not about you at all. What if this is about the statue? Of course it's about me. Yes, you're probably right. Oh, dear. <sighs> Wonderful. Oswald, take a breath. <sighs> so, what are you doing? It's an old trick I learned in the lab. Most solvents have as their base. I am the son of water, but if water touches me, I die. What am I? Again with the riddle. Salt. Most people think of it as a food additive, but potassium salt is found in detergents, soaps. What is your point, Ed? I know where the redheads are. I did it, boss. I got him for you. Peace and order have once again been restored to Gotham. The Red Hood Gang is no more. My very own man, Butch Gilzean, risked life and limb to face down the bandits. Was your life ever in danger, Butch? I can honestly say that if I had hesitated, I'd have been a goner. <laughs> All right, people, listen up. It's happy hour. Finish up those reports and let's call it a day. Hey, uh, Ed, even before you went crazy, I never liked you. We said Bruce Town. Listen, Butch did us all a favor. Red Hoods go bye bye, case closed. Look at the way the bodies fell. It's as if they were just standing there waiting to be killed. Butch comes all the way in the room, but only one man pulled out a gun. I guess they weren't threatened. 
by a 300-pound gorilla. Whose side are you on anyway? Hmm? No one's losing sleep over a bunch of dead crooks, least of all me. I said wrap it up. What have we here? There he is, the man of the hour. I have a surprise for you, Butch. Not in the mood. What's in the box? Open it. Thanks. I already got one. Oh, of course you do. And you certainly wouldn't need this one as it's so similar to your very own pocket square. This is from the Red Hood crime scene. It turns out that your suit and the Red Hood suits are all made by the same tailor, Mr. Fuji. That's some coincidence. I thought so myself, which is why I called Mr. Fuji, and he said that a large man with a metal hand, not many of those running around, bought all six of the suits, which means, ta-da, you're the architect of the Red Hood. I should snap your neck right now. You haven't heard my offer. We killed Penguin together. What are you talking about? You're his guy. Oh, please, you fell for that act. Yes, he broke me out of Arkham. Very appreciative. But I was not cut out to be number two. I've simply been waiting for my moment, which you have graciously provided. How would you like to run Gotham with me? <laughs> the two of us. Working together. You have proven yourself far more cunning than I imagined. Now I assume this little drama of yours was meant to climax tonight. So, put on the hood. Kill Penguin. I'll help you escape. Tomorrow we divide up the city. You'd really turn on him? After all he did for you? In a heartbeat. No. Okay. Then I guess it's time for surprise number two. You got the Zazz? I got the Zazz. And he got the Tabitha. Penguin's history. Question is, are you? And now the mayor would like to say a few words. Damn, where have you been? I've been looking for you all evening. Oh, just tying up loose ends. I just wanted to say, good luck. Okay, thank you. Tonight, is a celebration not of my victory, but of Gotham's. This is a new day! I wouldn't celebrate yet, Mr. Mayor. Red Hoods ain't finished yet. Stan, what are you doing? Wait! Sorry, boss. What? The mayor, our mayor, vowed that all of the Red Hoods would be destroyed. And now we have the real leader caught. Red handed. You really thought I'd give you real bullets. You are an idiot. I will kill you for that. After all that I've done for you, I gave you a job! I gave you everything! I used to be somebody in this town, and then you and that sniveling little son of a- <laughs> Shut up! I am shocked and grieved. One of my dearest friends has betrayed me. But let it be known! 
that Oswald Cobblepot will prosecute anyone who threatens Gotham. Here, here. Yeah. Oopsie Daisy. Showtime. Oswald, move. I am gonna enjoy this. Best party ever. <laughs> Wait, not now. Ginger tea with honey. It's my mother's remedy for a sore throat. You sure you don't need a doctor? Not fine. <laughs> I still don't understand why you didn't tell me what you were doing. Your shock when seeing Butch had to be genuine. The people had to believe it. And they did. And once again, you're the city's hero. <laughs> You were almost killed. And you saved me. Again. <clears throat> I hope you know, Oswald. I would do anything for you. You can always count on me. Thank you. These go directly to the city clerk's office. And this. Leave this outside Nikki the Nail's place. Knock twice, light it, and then run. Okay. Good morning, Mayor Cobblepot. Good morning to you, my chief of staff. Here are your schedules for the day. This covers your duties as mayor, and this as kingpin of the underworld. You really are settling into your role here, aren't you, Ed? And yet I still have so much to learn from you. <clears throat> I came up empty tracking down Butch. Somehow that one-handed ape managed to disappear. I suspect he's hiding with his old crew. I'm sorry for letting you down. You have done nothing of the sort. I would be lost without you. In fact, um, there is something that I need to tell you. Something very important. What is it, Oswald? You know what? I forget. <laughs> In and out of my head, just like that. <laughs> Don't you hate that when that happens? That never happens to me. You know what? I believe that. <laughs> so, uh, where are we off to first? PS 134, you're touring a school. Press will be there, so we better get a move on. Great. I love children. <clears throat> This is our third grade class. How many more grades do we have to visit? This is a K through 12 building. 12? We don't have to see every single class, do we? Mayor James used to read to the children. Aubrey James is illiterate, ma'am. It's well documented. Perhaps we should move on. What's wrong with that boy then? That's Luke. He's new here. Hello, Luke. I am Mayor Cobblepot. Why aren't you playing with the other children? What if they don't like me? Well, how would you ever know if you don't give it a try? 
And if they don't like you, wait for them to turn their backs and push them down the stairs. <laughs> Little guy needed a push, that's all. I continue to be in awe of you, Oswald. Ed, there is something I would like to discuss in a more private setting. Shall we say dinner at the mansion? Eight o'clock? I'll pick us up a nice bottle of wine. Impossible to pick the perfect bottle, isn't it? Well, it all depends on region and vintage. Of course, you have to consider the wine pairing. Miss Kringle. No, um, no, my name's Isabella. Um, I'm sorry to bother you. I don't usually talk to people. There's just um, something about you. No, no, please. There's... There's no need to apologize. You just... You remind me of someone that I used to know a long time ago. You struggle to regain me. When I'm lost, do you struggle to obtain me? What am I? Time. I'm Edward. Edward Nigma. And that's where I discovered my love of books. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought a fractured tibia would launch my library career, but it did. Fun fact, the tibia is the second largest bone in the body. Second only to the femur. You have exquisite femurs. paper. <laughs> what time is it? Oh, uh, it's just past six. <clears throat> um, Edward, these past 12 hours have been the best of my life. When can we meet again? What can't you have for breakfast or lunch? Dinner. I'd love to. Delightful. <laughs> meet me at the mayor's mansion at eight. I understand that one is expected to wait 24 hours before filing a missing persons report, but sir, I am the mayor. Oswald. I am so sorry. <gasps> you didn't come home, I assume the worst. <laughs> I'm so glad you're okay. I'm better than okay. <laughs> I met someone. <laughs> I think I'm in love. <laughs> You are going to cut quite the fine figure at the Founders' Dinner tonight. Yes. Did you know that this dinner has been thrown annually for over 200 years? It was started by the first families of Gotham. Only the most powerful citizens are invited. It's a shame I don't have a plus one. No, I can't go anyway. I have a date. With the woman you claim to be in love with after only knowing for a few hours? Heart keeps its own time. I'm partial to the purple. The brocade brings out my eyes. Are you sure you aren't mistaking infatuation for love? You did say she is the spinning image of Kringle. Isabella's beautiful and smart. So she bears a passing resemblance to Kristen. It's just the universe telling me, telling me I have a second chance at love. Why did she say she works? the main public library. You read about the brocade. So while I did kill my girlfriend, who does look rather similar to you, it was not out of malice or intent. It was an accident. 
that I deeply regret. And I was not going to tell you this, but then... Edward, I know what you did. You do? I spent the afternoon reading every article about you. You know what I did, and yet you still came on the state anyway. Well, that's not logical. Love isn't logical. I've lived my whole life inside the pages of books. Any other men I've dated, they didn't compare to the lovers I spent my life with. Anthony, Cleopatra, Romeo and Juliet, Othello, Desdemona. All of whom died. Edward, you're the first to measure up. You're the one I waited for. You're not scared of me? <laughs> of course I am. Can you feel how fast my heart's beating? Hey, you would not believe that that... Oswald, good evening. This is Isabella. <sighs> we have met. <laughs> mm. Would you excuse me? I am very tired. Be broken before it can be used. Eggs. <laughs> Correct. As always. <sighs> Edward, you spoil me. You make it easy. I'm gonna miss you. I'm only gone two days. Well, actually, your conference ends at 1.45 on Monday. With traffic that puts you in at 5.30 into Gotham. If you leave on time today, which I'm sure that you will. Mm-hmm. You'll be gone for 44 and one half hours. Less than two days. I will hold on to that thought. Cream. I got your cream. Mm-mm-mm. So what does one do at a librarian's conference? I would bore you. Nothing that you would say, do, or think could bore me. In that case, let me read you my schedule. <laughs> <clears throat> Where did those glasses come from? These? These are my backup pair. I normally wear contacts. I thought you knew that. Something wrong? Edward, what is it? You look like you've seen a ghost. Excuse me. style on me. Oh dear. I haven't upset you, have I, Ed? <laughs> I would have thought you would have been used to seeing people in mirrors. Mirrors just in my head. <laughs> like that makes a difference. But honestly, besides the fact that she looks just like me, you went from someone who files papers in a police station to someone who files books in a library. Got super original. You and Isabella are... You're somewhat different. Well, I'm dead. <laughs> and she's alive. But how long will that last? Until you... I... Uh, uh... I would never hurt Isabella. That you would have said the same thing about me. Face it, Ed. You're a killer. It's only a matter of time before...
Maybe she's right. What if there's something about Miss Kringle's, Kristen's, Isabella's face? What if there's something about her face that unlocks this side of me? What if I do hurt her? Oswald. Yes. You're smiling. I was. Yes. Oh, well, I was just thinking how darned lucky Isabella is. You love her, yet to protect her, you are willing to break up with her. Beautiful. Sad, but beautiful. So you think I should break up with her? I'm sorry, I thought that's what we were talking about. Oh, certainly, I would never- No, you're sure. right. If I did hurt her, I would never forgive myself. <laughs> that life would put her in your path again, only to snatch her from you. Why? I can't do it. What? I can't break up with her. But you said yourself. I need you to do it for me. Would you do that? I would be forever in your net. Just be gentle. Of course. Isabella. Isabella, I got your note. I thought you needed to leave for your conference. I can be late, Edward. This is more important. Oswald. <clears throat> Oswald, the mayor, he informed me of your position. Um, but believe me, I, I think our breaking up is for the best. No, Edward. It's not. I understand your fear. It comes from a place of love. I know you won't hurt me. You never could. I don't think that you'd... Oh, oh my... Kristen. I found old photos and newspapers. You have... I to need to leave. No, 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 look at me. Look at me. You don't know what you're doing. I am forcing you to face your fear. You won't hurt me. Even when I look like this, Edward. How'd she take it? What? Oh, uh, uh, everything is wonderful. Isabella should mean that uh, I was worried over nothing. I'm so happy for you. But why are you back? But she had to go to her conference. I insisted. You're a good man. You look done in. I will hear all about it tomorrow. Get some sleep. Everything okay? Fine. You've been checking your watch all morning. You expecting- A call from Isabella. Just at our librarian conference. Ah. Probably just busy. Most likely. I can imagine librarian conferences can be hectic affairs. 
Not so much. Well, I'm sure she'll call soon. <clears throat> Hello. This is Edward Nigma. Why? Very well. Where's the GCPD? They want to see me. Wouldn't say why. Oh? You don't think that something happened? No. The officer said Isabella blew through a red light and crashed into a train. They think she might have fallen asleep at the wheel. Yours was the last number in her phone. I am so, so sorry, Ed. Did she suffer? No. Anything you need. Ed, anything at all, I am here for you. Now just raise your chin a mite higher. Would you excuse me for a moment? Ed? Yes? The music! It's too loud, I'm sorry. Isabella always loved Favorti. So you are just going to sit here? Yes. All by yourself? Correct. Okay then. Apologies. Ed, I, as much as anyone, know how hard it is to lose someone. Even if you've only known them for like a week. But this is not healthy behavior. It is depressing, and if I'm being honest, a bit scary. Less scary, Jack. No, you're not. Ed, you need to heal. And healing is about moving on. No doubt you're right. Of course I'm right. I'll go to where she was taken from me and say goodbye. Isabel would want you to be happy. Isabella. <laughs> of course. <laughs> the time I knew you feels like a dream. And now I'm awake. I wish I'd gone on sleeping. I will never forget you, my love. Goodbye, Isabella.
We are four blocks from her apartment. Spare some change, sir. I'm sorry. You weren't perchance in this area at 11 p.m. last night. Uh-huh. So did you saw the accident? I haven't seen nothing for 20 years, but I heard it. Girls screaming, help, help. Then bang. I'm sorry. She was screaming before the crash? Well, she was dead after. But you, de you definitely heard screaming? Yep. Blood curdling. How odd. as I suspected. The brake lines are cut. How is it that not one single ignoramus from the GCPD notices the brake lines are cut? I don't know. Someone paid him off. The question is who? Who has that kind of money and influence? You don't know. But I do. Oswald! Oswald, I need to speak with you. Yes, but I have to show you something this first. Is important. So is this. I was not compassionate this morning, and I regret that. What you are going through is terrible. So. The artist went off a photograph, but I think it's an excellent likeness. Isabella was murdered. What? I went to the intersection where she died. It is four blocks from her apartment. Who falls asleep four blocks from their home? No one. Also, a very fragrant homeless man said that he heard her scream before the crash, so definitely not asleep. Now, if she were awake, why didn't she break? Why are there no skin marks? Ed, Ed, you are exhausted. You are, you are emotional. Her brake lines were cut. Which leaves one conclusion. Murder. No. Yes. And I knew who did it. Who? Butch. Butch in retaliation for exposing him as a leader of the Red Hood gang. That makes perfect sense. I swear to you, Ed, we will find him and make him pay for what he has done. Thank you. I knew I could count on you. Are you checking up on me? What? No. Barbara Keen was just here. She's looking for them. So? So? Are you finished yet? We've talked about this. I need to work through my grief my way. Of course. And I support you. Any chance you could work through it a smidge faster? I am swapped today. <sighs> Sorry you had to hear that. You can just be so self-centered. What were we talking about? Oh, right, how I found you. <laughs> well, it wasn't hard. The next time you want to disappear, consider taking sabbatical from your favorite restaurant. Your love of Gusto's eggplant parmesan isn't exactly a state secret. I'm here. That with a healthy amount of midazolam in your food to knock you out. 100 bucks to your delivery boy, who, by the way, I get the feeling hasn't been being tipped very well, Butch. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? You're gonna regret this. If you touch one hair on our head, I swear I'll kill you. Save your strength, big guy. You're gonna need it. And you tell Penguin he's a coward. If he wants me dead, he should come here and do it like a man. This has nothing to do with Penguin. 
And you are the coward killing an innocent woman. What? Who? Isabella. She was my everything and you took her from me. What in the hell are you talking about? I was hoping you'd be difficult. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you? I have never even heard of this woman. Well, then I suppose I should put my intention elsewhere. No. No! Leave her out of this. Afraid I can't do that. She is an integral part of your penance. It was such a pleasant surprise when I discovered that the two of you were together. <laughs> you know, after the initial gag reflex. You know, how about this gal doesn't even exist? I mean, come on. Who would fall in love with a freak show like you? Oh, wait. <laughs> Let me guess. I bet she's got a certificate too, huh? <laughs> Tell me what you want. I want to break Butch's heart before I end his life. You know, kind of a eye for an eye thing. But in this case, I'll take a hand. Oh, goody. You're finally awake. The show continues. Dun da 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 dun 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 da! Ta da! I designed it myself. You wanna see how it works? Okay. I love a captive audience. So, we'll set the timer for, say, 55 seconds. Now, when the timer hits zero, the spring loaded blade is released. Simple. Now, for the fun part. You can stop the blade from being released if you click this little button. But if you do, it will send a fatal jolt of electricity to Zap Butch. It's a simple task, really. Stop the blade from falling and kill Butch, or... Mm. The choice. My dear, is yours. Will we hear the zap of heartbreak or the sound of one hand clapping? <laughs> Ed, come on. Come on, let's talk about this, huh? Come on, Ed. You don't have to do this. Come on, let's talk about this. Come on, listen. I told you I've never heard of anyone named Isabel. Isabella! Why is that so difficult? Also, I'm not the one you should be pleading with. Your life is in her hand. What difference does it make? You're gonna kill me one way or the other, right? Good point. <laughs> New deal. If she loves you enough to sacrifice her hand, twinsies, in exchange for your life, I swear, on the memory of my beloved Isabella, I will set you both free. Tabby, baby, come on. We can get out of here. Can... I like you, Butch, I really do. But to be completely honest, I'm not exactly in a love place right now. <laughs> Sorry, big thought. I wish I could say that I was surprised, but I knew that she was going to say that. It's why I made the offer. Any final words? I would keep it brief. Tabby. Baby. The last few weeks have been the best of my life. And it's okay you don't love me. Because I love you. Frick. 
guy like me, that's that's enough. And you, you damn right I killed her. I killed the woman you loved. You know what she said to me? Right before I put a bullet in her brain? You know what she told me? She said she wished she would have been with a real man. Hey, Butch. Yeah? You're sweet. You said you, that you put a bullet in her head. Isabella died in a car crash, but the brake lines were cut. I don't care! I told you I never heard of her! You... you really didn't kill her? No! Untie me! She's gotta get to a hospital! Come on! I put that hand on some ice. No rest for the wicked. Relax. I'm not here to get revenge for you lopping off Tabby's paw. Though I am surprised to find you back at work and not tracking down who really did kill your lady love. That's because you don't see the full picture. The mayor has many enemies. These enemies understand that I'm a fundamental part of this operation. They weaken me, they weaken him. That was clearly the intent of killing Isabella. Also, I have spies all over the city. Soon enough, whoever killed Isabella will reveal themselves. And I will strike. Poor blind baby. It's always hardest to see what's right under our noses. Penguin! Did you just fake off Penguin? Needless to say, that is absurd on a number of levels. Really? All a crime requires is means, motive, and opportunity. And your beaky little buddy certainly has the means and opportunity. But no motive. Oh, I would say he had the oldest motive in the book. Rich men want it. Wise men know it. The poor all need it. Love. What does that have to do? And the penny drops. You are suggesting that Oswald is in love with me. That is ridiculous. I know, I mean, personally, I find you a bit of a cold fish, but Ozzy saw you being taken away from him by that bookish vixen, and... <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder what your motive is in all this. That's for later. Right now, I just want to see justice for that poor, sweet girl. Ms. Keene, I need you to understand two things. One, Oswald did not kill Isabella. And two, he's not in love with me. Are you so certain? Don't you owe it to her to find out? Let me know how it goes. And have we made any headway on the waterfront negotiations? I've spoken with the union leader. He agreed to our offer. So those photos can go back in the vault. They were quite saucy, weren't they? <laughs> and how about the- Your approval for the new casino should come through tomorrow. Demolition can begin right away. And I cannot tell you how good it is to see you back to your old self. Just one last signature. This is your resignation. Isabella's death has altered things, and I can't continue. No! Ed, I will not let you leave. It is not in your best interest. You have to stay busy. I say this. Uh, 
We're friends. Aren't we, Oswald? Huh? Of course. <laughs> Since the accident. And, and I, I never thought that this could happen. Um, I've had the desire to become more than employer, employee. More than friends. I have been feeling the same. I didn't want to mention it because of all the awfulness about Isabel. Isabella. But one cannot deny love. What is it? What's wrong? There. There's been a misunderstanding. I was going to propose that we become partners. Business partners. Partners? Then. Excuse me. And it is with great pleasure that I present this award to Mr. Kyle Davis for his magnificent book, Gotham Sewers, An Oral History. Looks just fascinating. Oh, here too, God. I love sewers. I was worried when you ran off that I might have upset you. Can't we just pretend that nothing happened? To go back to the way things were? You are the best friend I've ever had. I don't want to lose you. Please. You're my best friend as well, Oswald. Remember that. Son of a bitch! Hear him out. Please. talking about penguin he killed the librarian what and you cut off my hand i assume you want something with penguin gone the underworld will meet a new leader i think it's time gotham had a woman's touch the crime families will never follow you well that's where you come in you know the family's in and out not to mention you're a whiz at strategy Think about it, Ed. Your brains, their brawn, my, me. We could make quite a team. We destroy Penguin first. Of course. But there is one thing you need to do. Apology not accepted. Well, we'll work on that. Drinks. A very good job. Bye. 
about it. Hook, line, and sinker. Voice wasn't quite right, but uh, no. Bravo, boys. Penguin lost his mind on national TV, just like you said he would. It's all about the power of suggestion. And whispering in the right ears. Do what I say, and you'll be the next chief of staff. Tell him I'm still grieving. Margaret Hurst is in your office waiting for you. And remember to say exactly what I told you about his father. Why don't you just leave these bodies for the cops? Have them arrested. That's too easy, Tamitha. I want this to be a slow, painful death. One of a thousand deep cuts. First, we take away his mind. Then, the part I like, we destroy his empire and take it for ourselves. And then when this bird is broken and alone, we do the humane thing and put him out of his misery. <laughs> Nothing! He is out there, someone has him! Sorry, boss. Mr. Nigma wasn't at any of Tommy Bones' or the Duke's hideouts. Santino! Hit Santino. He was close with Tommy Bones. I, I bet they are in this together. Boss, gotta tell you, I'm hearing some weird things. Ed is in danger. I will tear this city apart brick by brick! What? Also, what? Ev, is that really you? Are, are, are you okay? I, I can't talk long. I snuck away to the phone. Ed, who has you? Where are you? Kane, chemicals. Hurry, Oswald, hurry, please. Ed, Ed, Ed. Uh, come on, now. No, Gabe, not you. You stay by the phone in case he calls back. Kane, chemicals, let's go, move. Remember, Ed's safety is all that matters. Whoever took him will pay, but only once Ed is back. Ed! Edward! Ed! Are you all right? Tell me you are all right. I'm fine, Oswald. Uh, of course you are. Where are they? Who dared to think they could lay their hands on you? I'm alone. <laughs> you escaped. You did, didn't you, you rascal? Did you bring anyone else? What? Why, no. Uh... Just wondering if I was going to have to reload. I don't understand. I know. That's been half the fun. I I'm sorry. I. I, I what is happening? I... You were kidnapped? Not unless you count kidnapping yourself. <laughs> Recognize it? Oh, why should you? I doubt you did the deed yourself. That car belonged to Isabella. And whatever you've heard... I know it was you, Oswald. Isabella was my everything, and you took her from me. And now I've taken everything from you. Well, almost everything. You still have your life. But that ends tonight. But my father appeared to me. I saw him. No. You saw a man that I met in Indian Hill. Does killer impersonations. Did you see, Oswald. How do I put this? Ghosts aren't real. My father's remains. You stole him from his grave? Yep. Don't worry. He's at peace now. I gently placed his remains inside a dumpster behind a Chinese restaurant. You were angry, I understand. I even forgive you. But, but killing me is not the way. So you admit you killed Isabella? Fine. Is that what you want? Yes. I confess. I had her killed. But guess what? You should thank me, because we both know what would have happened if I had it. Yes! I could have lived a life with the woman I loved. I 
could have been happy. <laughs> no, Ed. You would have killed her. <laughs> Just like you did the other one. You couldn't have helped it. And afterward, you would have hated yourself. Well, we'll never know, will we? I did it for love. What? I did it because I love you. You should know that. Shut up! Love is about sacrifice. It's about putting someone else's needs and happiness before your own. Ed, please. The truth is, Oswald, you would sacrifice anyone to save your own neck. Even me. Now, if you look above us, you will see a cauldron of highly corrosive acid, which is currently being held in place by this chain. When the ice melts, the chain comes loose. The vat of acid tips. You get the idea. Ed, please. Please. I can change. Say you're right. Say you're right. I, I, the fact that I love you proves that I can change. Just give me a chance. You know as well as I that a man facing death will say anything to save his skin. And you won't change. Because you can't. Now, I was going to have you say hello to Isabella. But I think you are going to a very different place. Goodbye, Oswald. Dad! Give up, Nigma. Save your own ass. Live to love another day. Hey? Wow. What's going on? You have a weird look on your face. Like, weirder than normal. I should want him dead. Should? Oswald. You loved him. And he betrayed you. Actually, I don't know that I did. Love him. Not really. What? Ed was right. I thought I loved him. Because he saw me as no one had since my mother. But I killed Isabel. I'm pretty sure her name is Isabella, but go on. Because I wouldn't share him. Ed said love is sacrifice. I should have been able to sacrifice my happiness for his. I couldn't. But I'm ready now. I won't call Ed. I won't let you hurt him. So you'd rather die than give up the man who tried to kill you? <laughs> I would. Isn't that crazy? Yes. <gasps> it is. Guess you're not as smart as you thought you were. He didn't give you up after all. You're in this together. But why? Because I didn't want to just take what you had. I wanted to take what you believed. I wanted you to die knowing that you were incapable of loving another person. But I can't. I just proved that, right? Does that mean I passed? <laughs> and I don't know what it means. Ed, I love you. I know you believe that now. So you need to listen to me when I tell you. By doing this, it will change you. I've killed before, Oswald. Not like this. This won't be a crime of passion or self-preservation. This will be the cold-blooded murder of someone you love. I don't love you. You need me, Edward Nigma, just as I need you. You cannot have one without the other. You killed Isabella. The point is... That is the point! 
You can't talk your way out of this, Oswald. I have wanted you to suffer as I've suffered. You killed her, so you die. When I met you, you were a nervous, jittery loser. You were nothing. I created Edward Nigma, and I am the only one in the world who truly sees you as you are. Who you can still become. You can't do this. Ed, are you listening to me? I'm listening. <laughs> Say something. I loved her, Oswald. And you killed her. Greetings, Professor. Help! Somebody help! The building's empty. No one's coming to help. Have a seat. Who, who are you? That is an excellent question. But I get to ask the first one. I can fill a room or just one heart. Others may have me, but I cannot be shared. What am I? What? It's a riddle. Answer the riddle. Uh, I... Uh, knowledge? Knowledge can't be shared, Professor. Really? You are the chair of a chemistry department. You spent a career sharing knowledge! No! <sighs> I apologize. The others did very well either. The others? Oh, you'd know them. One was an artist, one was a writer, one was a philosopher. The stars of Gotham's intellectual and artistic constellation. Fallen stars now. Why are you doing this? <sighs> My best friend recently said, there was no me without him. I shot him and dumped him in the river. He was a sort of guide to me on my journey. You see, I know who I am, Professor. It's how to be him that is eluding me. I seek guidance. I feel your every move. I know your every thought. I'm with you from birth, and I'll see you when you rot. What am I? I don't know. Well, that's just too bad.
I tell you about dripping on the couch? You are the only person I know who frets about his drug-induced hallucination making a mess. But if it makes you happy, thank you. I wonder how long you will be the public face of grief when people hear that you killed your best friend. And then there are your extracurricular activities. How many are we up to now? Five? Six? There was the curator, the writer, pretentious ass. So frustrating. They all fit the profile. High IQ, driven, creative. Yet each one failed. We must be the first person in history to go on a killing spree in order to find a life coach. Perhaps you should ditch the riddles. No. A good riddle reveals the asker. To solve it is to solve the mystery of the person posing it. If I can find someone to solve my riddles, I can find someone to help me. Do you really think you're going to find someone who can teach you how to be a villain? Yes! Of course I am. You said yourself there is no Edward Nigma without the Penguin. But knowing who I am and knowing how to be him, those are separate things. Ed, villains do not have teachers. I made myself into the Penguin when I threw Fish Mooney off a building. I didn't have anyone to help. Oh, how interesting. Perhaps I'm thinking about this all wrong. Obviously. I don't need a teacher. I need an enemy. No, that is not greatest. Villains have always been defined by the men that try to stop them. And I know the perfect man. Please, do not say Jim Gordon. Like I had a choice. Oh, you'll thank me. This is gonna be electrifying. Knight to queen three, mate in two. Oh, honestly, they call anyone a grandmaster these days. Can we discuss why you're doing this? I've told you why. The real reason. See, Ed, the trouble with talking to projections of your psyche, <laughs> and you of all people should know this, is that they know everything you know, including the things you're trying not to know. Gordon can't help you. No one can. Face the truth. Yes, ma'am, we need to evacuate the building immediately. We're in the middle of an important tournament. Are you sure? Maybe I was wrong. Maybe this isn't the place. Oh, how interesting. Checkmate! <laughs> GCPD, everybody out! Don't move, freeze! Forget what I just said! Freeze! <laughs> You're late. I expected this call seven minutes ago. This is Lucius Fox of the GCPD. I know who you are, Mr. Fox. And by the way, it's bad manners to intercept other people's mail. You mean the telegram he sent? Gordon, he's not here. Who is this? You don't actually expect me to answer that, do you? Then tell me why you killed Professor Dyson and the others. I know it was you. I had no choice. They failed my test. Now it's your turn to try. And if I don't accept the invitation? There are lives at stake, Mr. Fox. Not just your own. Now listen closely. Tomorrow, when the pawn's on Queen, you'll find my next target in the belly of the beast. Solve my clue, Mr. Fox, and you'll be one step closer to passing my test. Uh, yeah,
when the pawn's on queen. Belly of the beast. And I'll be one step closer to introducing myself to Gotham. Once and for all. The chess killer. How terrifying. How will anyone sleep knowing the chess killer is on the loose? It's just a name dreamed up by some hack. Today will change everything. This is a mistake, what you're doing. I don't recall asking you. I showed you how to be Enigma, a man who could run the underworld and operate in plain sight. What you are planning is madness. No, it's a way forward. And the fact that it scares you gives me all the confirmation I need. Ed, you are not sleeping. You are taking drugs. You are having a conversation with your dead friend. Just admit that you are lost without me or you will destroy everything. I have to go. What are you doing? He is fierce in my dreams, seizing my guts. He floats me with dread. Soaked in his soul, he swims in my eyes by the bed. Pouring myself over him. The killing you killed a part of me. But I will find a way forward no matter the cost. I will be born anew. And I will leave you behind. Penguin saw you, Ed. He was the only one. He made you. There is no Enigma without the Penguin! As you take the badge today, approach Gotham as you would a cut of prime rib. Have a plan. Don't be afraid, and have plenty of antacids on hand in case of indigestion. What the hell are you doing here? Well, seeing as how your department is unable to locate our missing mayor, I'm here to give the graduating class a few remarks in his stead. There's no way I'm letting a cop killer address those cadets. I see. How is the view from the moral high ground, Harvey? View's perfect. Now get lost. Oh, Lucius Fox. Must be about me. <laughs> Hello, cadets. My name is Edward Nigma. Captain Bullock's tied up. What a day. Eh? You all look just dandy in your uniforms. How do I look? <laughs> I have one question for all of you. Light as a feather, yet no man can hold it long. What am I? Well, no future commissioners here. The answer is... <laughs> I think that's for me. You foxy? Enigma. Hello. Only one person refers to me as Foxy. I have gassed a room full of folks with a deadly toxin. I cordially invite you to come upstairs and play a game with me for the antidote. This is a game between me and you. Come upstairs alone, or the cadets and Bullock die. Come on my way. <laughs> well, look who it is. I'm so glad you decided to play. Are you okay, Harvey? Look at him. He's fine. I want to hear Harvey say he's okay. Don't try to outsmart this lunatic, Lucius. Cadets' lives are at stake. Let's begin. Wonderful. I will give you three riddles. For every riddle you get wrong, I cut a rope. You get three wrong, and this excuse for a higher primate, and the antidote around his neck. 
fall over the ledge. <laughs> wow. Am I clear? And if I get them right? Everyone lives! Even if you get just one. Can't say fairer than that. Okay. Wonderful. First riddle. I can fill a room with just one heart. Others can have me, but I can't be shared. What am I? The answer's love. What? No. No! The... The answer is loneliness! How do you not know that?! No, 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 no! no. Oh, God! Ah, ah, ah. Oh! Ah, 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 oh! Ah. Ask me another. Okay. Second riddle. I can be a member of a group, but can never blend in. What am I? A snowflake. A sn No! 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 The answer is an individual! Uh, <sighs> wait, snowflake is also a suitable answer. No two are alike, making it by definition individuals. Therefore, an answer befitting your riddle. Okay. I don't think you grasp how this works. You have to give my answer. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oswald was right. He's the only one. No! It's just you. You are a good enough enemy! No. 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 Three riddles. Three answers. Those are the rules, Ed. Okay. Final riddle. I feel your every move. I know your every thought. I'm with you from birth. Then I'll see you rot. What am I? What did you do, Ed? What did you... What happened to Penguin? Something happened, didn't it? Did you kill him? Oh, this is not gonna be good. This is not gonna be good. This you did, didn't you? I feel your every thought. I feel your every move. I know your every thought. I'm with you from birth, and I'll see you rot. What am I? A reflection. Why does it always have to be three answers? Why can't he get four? Come on! Correct. Neck that turned out to be grape juice. <laughs> and the deadly toxin? Plain old knockout gas. Why the charade? Well, the point wasn't to kill a bunch of cops. The point was to have you play my game. <laughs> but you killed Penguin. And you killed Professor Dyson and the others. Why? Have you always been Foxy? Foxy? I'm not sure what you mean. All my life, I felt like there was someone inside of me. Someone stronger and smarter. Someone that people would fear. No one else saw that. Except Penguin. Except Oswald. So why did you kill him? Because Oswald killed the woman I loved. And with Oswald gone, is that the world I'm meant to fill? To be a reflection. No. Because I know who I am. I know how to be him. And you helped that. So thank you. Ed. Ed. <clears throat>
You killed six people. Seven, including Penguin. You just announced to the entire city that you are a villain and a murderer. Mm hmm. Ed, if there is any part of your mind that is not insane, listen to me. You need help. Turn yourself in. My actions seem bad to you. To anyone? I... I just... killed the best friend that I ever had. My search for a teacher or an enemy That was just me trying to hold on to him for a little bit longer. But now I know who I am without him. So who are you now? Oh, come on, Foxy. I'm the Riddler. Love the view from here. Not really a fan. You understand why. I want you to know that our friendship meant something to me. I cared about you. And I miss you. Gee. Almost makes up for being dead. You do know the entire GCPD is hunting you. Yes. Well... Not to burst your bubble, but wanted or not, no one is going to be afraid of the Riddler. Maybe not yet, but they will be. Goodbye, Oswald.